Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, says the federal government will not pay ransom to secure the release of the abducted students and members of staff of Government Science College, Kagara. There have been unconfirmed reports circulating on social media that the government had paid a huge amount of money to secure the release of the Kagara abductees. But Mohammed insists that talks that the government paid ransom is simply a conspiracy theory. On Wednesday, February 17th, armed men in military uniforms raided the Government Science College in Kagara, Niger State, killing one student and kidnapping about 42 people, including 27 children. We have now invited two guests, social commentator Yemi Daniels and political analyst Durudin Adebiru to discuss this. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Mr. Daniels, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Lai Mohammed said that talks that the government paid ransom for the release of the Kankara boys and the Lapchi girls are conspiracy theories. He also said that the government has no intention to pay ransom for the release of the Kagara boys. But what do you think about the contradictory information from the People's Gazette that the boys have been freed and that the government paid about 800 million naira for their freedom? Well, well thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to say that, uh, well, much as I wouldn't want to doubt whatever government is saying or what people give it, is also saying, and this whole contradictory, uh, contradictory statement uh, boils down to distrust on the part of uh, the district of citizens towards government. Over the years, uh, we have had situations where government said things, said A, and it turned out to be B. And when there is, there, when there is such public distrust, there is also really a tendency for some people to take advantage. That is not. That doesn't mean I am I am uh, in doubt of whatever people gave it may have published. But fundamentally, what happened here is that there is a tendency to believe people give it more than government because government uh, has not been. Uh, what I have not been thought worthy enough from the from from the perspective of Nigerians. Mm. So that's the entire situation. People are likely to believe this. People give it a lot more. To be honest with you, given the antecedent of government in terms of handling uh, terrorists, I would say it again. I do not consider bandits. I don't consider them as bandits. I consider them as terrorists. And to the effect that governments have negotiated at all the times, given money, parted with a lot of money at all, at all the times, the tendency to believe that government may have or would commit money for the release of the boys is more is plausible. Hmm. So that is what I think in the circumstances. Don't forget that Nigeria negotiated from a position of weakness in the circumstances. All right. I, I want you to expatiate on what you mean when you say we're negotiating from, you know, from a stance of weakness. And also, I want you to talk about, you know, the seemingly different information we're getting. Lai Mohammed has said the government will not pay ransom, would not negotiate with the bandits. And on the other hand, he's saying that all options are on the table to free the boys. So what then do we believe? Uh -huh. So you, you, you would agree with me, they use the words like kinetic and non-kinetic approaches. You know, sometimes when people want to confuse you, they tend to use uh, big words just to, just, to, just to make people a little bit, a bit confused and having to grab the dictionary or whatever resource material they might need to understand what is actually going on. I'll say government is negotiating from the place of weakness because we do not have a hand of counter-terrorism in Nigeria. That's a simple truth. You remember that a former chief of army staff did say that it would take a long time, 20 years, 
because there, are so, there were so many ungoverned spaces that tells us that to a very large extent that we are not winning the war against terrorism. So on, the, on that basis, we are actually negotiating from a place of weakness. Hmm. Now, the police said they had identified the location of the boys. So what's then the next step to be taken? Or what security strategies should the military employ to rescue the students and the teachers? Uh, well, I am not a security expert, but I do also under, I do know that when the American government was gonna take or was gonna take one of the citizens from one of the enclaves of this terrorist, they had a way of getting it done. You understand? So uh, I, will, uh, like, like, I, I have always thought that our counter-terrorism strategy might be, de might be deficient or defective. You understand? So each time we have to interface with terrorists, we are, on the, we are having a short end of the state. And as such, we are negotiating. We are always negotiating from a place of weakness. I, I would ask you, you would, I want to know, how did Sheikh Gumi get in touch with those guys? What was the channel that was explored? And to think that these things keep happening tells us that there's a problem somewhere that we may not be considering. All right. How about Mr. Daniels? Do we still have you on the line? Yes, I'm still here. All right. Uh, while we try to reconnect with Mr. Adigbenru, continuing your train of thought about how Nigeria should effectively tackle this. You can go ahead, sir. Uh, uh, like I say, I am not an expert, but I, I, would, I, I would expect a situation where we are negotiating from a place of strength. Like I did say, the, the chief of army staff told us a couple of weeks ago, or last week rather, or in the course of the week rather, that there are many ungoverned spaces that tells us that we have a big problem in our hands and we are not necessarily winning the war against terrorism. Now, if having said that, that means at every point in time this people strike, we are not in a good place. That is what it means. So what, it, what we need to do is to adopt more proactive measures, which I may not be able to say uh, because I'm not an expert in this area, but clearly we have always been on the reactionary side. We are not being proactive. I have said it times without number that I think our counter-terrorism strategies are not effective. Now we need to adopt new measures. We need to deploy new strategies. I do not know to the extent, the extent to which our airstrikes are functional. Are they, is it an ongoing thing or it is just when we think we should, when we are, you understand? Uh, we, I do not, they, they, we, should be, we should be combing some bits of forest every now and then, in my opinion, you understand? That there should be ongoing, continuous, assault on that region so that these guys know that we mean business. All right. You understand? Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Yemi Daniels, uh, I, I want to quickly get your thoughts on negotiating with ter terrorists, with dialoguing with them, and paying ransom for the release of children in Nigeria. Are you for or against that? Uh, uh, well, and uh, now, when it becomes a tradition, I am against it. To the best of my knowledge, it has become a tradition that every time we have this situation, we have to pay ransom. And every time you reward bad behavior, you keep reinforcing it. So when we pay ransom, we tell the boys, just go back to the, into the, into the enclave, redesign your studies, get more boys or get more students, and we'll pay you. Then a few months down, they come back again to the same thing. And when you have such a situation, I am against it. But like Mohammed has said, it's simply a conspiracy theory that it's the you know, efficiency of the Nigerian military that was responsible for the release of all the other school boys and girls that have been kidnapped. I, 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 had, said, I had said earlier, there is a problem of distrust. 
over the years, I've always said ransoms were never paid. Even when people were kidnapped, and Nigerian police had to intervene, and uh, they get people out. At the end of the day, the people get to say that we paid those amount of money. Meanwhile, the IGP or whoever comes on air to say no call was paid. Only for the victims to come and say, what did it? we paid money. Now, when such situations happen all time and again, the tendency to trust the government on issues like this will keep diminishing. So I did say it, uh, it borders on public distrust. So, right. so, so people are not likely to believe the Honorable Minister, given that the antecedents have always been that of deceit and all manner of double speak. Hmm. Indeed. But lastly, before I let you go, let's get your thoughts on how you know you feel we can better create safe spaces around educational institutions in Nigeria. Because this is not the first time we've had the Chibo girls abduction, the Dapchi girls uh, abduction. We've had the Kankara boys abduction just in December, uh, just about two months ago, and now this one. And how do you think that might affect education in, in northern Nigeria especially? Well, it's it, it, it common knowledge that uh, education is pretty, very, very poor in the northern part of Nigeria. Uh, good enough, there is a level of improvement, though. We used to have over 10 million out-of-school children in Nigeria. I think we have about 6 million now, and that is a good one. But when incidences like this happen, the, tenders, the rate of enrollment will start dropping because nobody wants to take, allow their children to go through this kind of trauma. So on, in that area, there is a tendency for parents to, to, have, to, 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 have some, to have some reservation towards enrolling the children, especially in that part of the country, because their safety is not guaranteed. Hmm. And we really do hope the Nigerian security forces, you know, speed up their actions so these kids can return to the safety of their homes. Thank you very much, Mr. Yemi Daniels, social commentator, for your time on the news. Thank you very much for having me. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.